They are expecting me at Ligovsky Prospect 3. In one of the most unusual apartments I have ever seen. First, a hallway, long and dark. Then, 16 rooms with 16 families. This is a commonalka, a shared apartment, a relic from Soviet times. Traveling back in history, traveling back to the USSR. At least that's what it looks like here. In the heart of St. Petersburg I meet people who have made a home in the Komunalka. A home they value despite all the difficulties. The power lines from the 50s can be a problem. It's actually awful here. The kitchen is the heart of the Komunalka. With clear rules and a strict hierarchy. Those who have lived here longer get the better parts. That means your own table and your own part of the communal stove. I was born here, so my husband and I are among the privileged ones. Komunalkas are an integral part of life in St. Petersburg. They help people feel less alone in the big city. The shabby but also cozy communal apartments are a stark contrast to the opulent tourist attractions. And they are also right in the center in the old town. A privilege. I visit one of these privileged residents in room number three. Mother Polina and her daughter Alexandra play music. Which seems to make Yoshik the cat hungry. <laughs> Father Yevgeny wants to install a heating and cooling system for the winter. Little Alexandra shouldn't have to freeze when the heater breaks down again, as it often does. Russia now is like the Soviet Union in the 70s. The economy will ultimately collapse and a new life will begin. But we won't live to see that, which is why we don't have big plans for the future. There's no reason we can't be happy in this country. Or to put it another way, there's nothing here we hate so much that we'd have to leave. Of course, Russia has flaws, but what country doesn't? A shortage of food is something this country definitely doesn't have. I stop at a market to buy groceries for a Komunalka meal. Merchants at Sinoirinok sell their products at Western prices, like in the stores. But with average monthly income in Russia, the equivalent of just 400 euros, shopping here is very expensive. This rich selection of foodstuffs shouldn't hide the fact that more and more Russians can hardly pay for this in times of crisis. I buy mutton, as requested by an Uzbek family in the Komunalka, who wants to make plov, a rice dish. Back in the Komunalka, the boundaries between public and private realms disappear as evening approaches. Especially with the smell of roasting mutton, the Uzbek couple, Bizo and his wife, whose name they won't divulge, would rather not talk about Russia, where they are guest workers. We just earn our money here. That's more than we do in Uzbekistan. There is a mini Uzbekistan here in the kitchen with rice and carrots and lots of meat. A piece of southern Uzbekistan in the Russian north. For Yevgeny and Polina there is chocolate and chips tonight, but also lots of Komunalka philosophy and talk about the Duma elections. I have no idea when I voted the last time. When was it? The early 2000s. Who are we even supposed to vote for? We don't have a real opposition with its own platform that would promise us a better life. A country as big as Russia needs imperialist-style leadership with a totalitarian touch. Anyone who wants to change that would have to risk instability. I don't want that. Many Russians accept this imperialist style of leadership with a totalitarian touch. 
A promise of stability is how President Vladimir Putin guarantees the support of so many in Russia. But for how long? The current economic crisis makes a stable future look increasingly like an illusion. 